just a few facts and figures which give you a sense of why it's demanding for us. So seven of every ten pounds in health and social care is spent on people in long-term condition. Yet we have a health system that is based uh, too much on episodic provision of care rather than continuity of care. So part of the redesign is recognising that our big issues are about long-term conditions and making sure uh, we design our services to reflect the fact that people will have ongoing needs. Uh, and it's why self-management is very important. So if you look at um, what happens in terms of the expression of those needs, half of GP appointments are for people with long-term conditions, Nearly two-thirds of all outpatient appointments in hospitals are people with long-term conditions and uh, seven out of every ten people in a hospital bed are uh, triggered by long-term conditions. And in 2018, the number of people with three or more long-term conditions nationally is going up to 2.9 million. If you look at, I, I remember um, there's a, a a chap called Professor Sir Cyril Chandler, who I used to be privileged to be in the room with quite often, who used to put up a graph um, about, um, uh, sounds a bit crude, but about long-term conditions and cost. So when you hit three long-term conditions, if you have three long-term conditions, the cost of your care goes up very substantially. And we have people with three, four, five, six, seven and more long-term conditions. Those are people whose needs are very broad, where we need to coordinate their care very effectively. Um, and um, some interesting <laughs> comparisons that our communications team have got out. 2.9 million people with three or more long-term conditions. So in that category where there's a high need for coordination, that's the equivalent of Birmingham, Leeds, Glasgow and Sheffield combined. Um, that's a lot of people. Um, 40,277 double-decker buses, I don't know, that's, um, it is a lot, 19 Glastonbury festivals, that conjures up all sorts of interesting images. Um, the medicines there might be a bit different, actually. Um, and just some other um, facts, really, um, that are coming through gradually. Um, number of people over 85, in the UK is rising by 50% to 1.9 million by 2025. Um, again, when people are over 85, we see their need for support and services increase um, very substantially. 2026, a million people expected to have dementia, estimated care costs of 35 billion. Um, big changes we need to make around dementia. 2029, 4 million people in England likely to need help with daily living. 2030, the number of people diagnosed with diabetes will double from 2.5 million now to 5 million. You spend, currently spend 10% of the NHS budget, it's calculated. If that happens, um, the budget gets blown. Lifestyles are important. 2030, 17 million people with arthritis, 3 million people living with cancer, so survivors of cancer. Um, and I'm not sure this is a target, I hope, I hope not, but a uh, prediction that by 2031, 46% of men and 41% of women um, are expected to be obese. Um, we have to do something to change that curve of demand that is going up. That's why the future looks demanding. And then just some local facts about the population in Hertfordshire. <coughs> so, 2012, 1.1 million, 2037, 1.4 million, um, so an increase in 271,000, um, 24% increase, higher than the national average, you know, we're seeing a, a lot of development in Hertfordshire, and um, a substantial increase in over 65s, so 73.5% um, increase, so by 2037, over 133,000 people over 65. Um, I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a resource. Um, and I think we need to think about 
uh, that in the way we engage our communities as well. Um, so I've already said, we need to make our services and the way they work together more simple. We do need to bring them together. We use the word integration. Um, it isn't a word that you use at the bus stop necessarily. Um, we do need to join up what we do for people. We need to deal with them in the round, not segment their needs into different boxes and compartments. That isn't how they live their lives. And we need to recognise people's needs. So when we're talking about outcomes, I think they should be focused on what it is that is important in those people's lives. What makes a difference for them? What is it that they want to do? Um, some interesting examples from the stadium programme. Is it get out and have a beer? Is it get to the bus stop? Those things make a huge difference. Uh, I think we need to be more open in the debate with our communities about how we're going to change our services. Um, engage those people who use our services, engage the wider community in thinking about how do we create healthy communities. Something I keep coming back to. We have to think about creating healthy communities. I don't know if people heard the Radio 4 example earlier in the week about Fleetwood having a whole community approach to health and well-being because of some of the economic uh, um, uh, changes that have occurred in that town over the last 20 years or so and the impact on health. So it's something we need to do. Um, we need to work more closely together with GPs, mental health and social care to join up those services and you've heard some examples this evening of where we're doing that. We also need to reach out to acute services and draw on their skills and knowledge to help us to manage people effectively in the community. We do need to implement our strategy. We need to have that focus on prevention that I've talked about, on self-management and on coordination so that we deliver services that are responsive to people's needs. And we do need to find different ways of delivering the benefit that people are looking for. The pressure on um, resources is going to increase. Um, we have about a 4% demand annually increasing and about a 1% budget increase. Um, you don't have to be um, a finance director or a brilliant account accountant to work out actually very soon that adds up to quite a lot of extra demand um, without uh, the associated extra resource. So we do need to deliver our services in a different way. We do need to do the things um, I've described this evening. And we need to think about health. And I, I think um, we sometimes have a strange relationship with health. When you look at what happened, I listened to the new Permanent Secretary at the Department of Health um, last week and he was talking about, he's just come into health, he's, he's never worked in it before and he said there are a number of wow things about the NHS which really struck him. Um, and just the things that we do, the, the technology that we've brought to healthcare, the changes we can make, going to acute services, you know, we're operating on people who are 90 plus and giving them a new hit. Uh, we're putting stents in people's um, hearts to, um, to uh, avoid heart attacks, keep them well. Uh, we're managing strokes in different ways, artificial limbs are different. The technology um, and brilliance of um, our biomedical sciences um, is remarkable and we've created a huge expectation. Um, and I think we've become a bit dependent on that brilliance. But actually health is a responsibility that we all carry and it doesn't come out of a, a bottle of pills. Um, it's about how we live and how we um, live healthily in our community. So I think that's a, a really important message that, that we need to, um, to continually get across. So we need to support and develop those uh, communities. Um, our plans have to be informed by people who use our services, by their carers and by their support network. We have to listen really carefully to what people are saying to us. We will work with other people to maintain people in their local communities wherever they want to do that. And mostly that's what people want. They want the time to be used well um, and they want to live their lives normally uh, as far as possible. <coughs> Sometimes people are doing that in very difficult circumstances. We need to make that happen as much as possible. 
and we need to focus on improving the quality of people's lives. Um, so the future is demanding, but one thing I know is that there will be an unwavering commitment of people in this organisation to do the very, very best job that they can on behalf of the communities they serve. And again, I think you've seen some remarkable examples this evening of that commitment, that desire to deliver really good services. Um, and we will carry that into the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tom. We are over on the slide, so please bear with us. Let's uh, just briefly take any sort of questions or observations.